Hello everyone, happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I was out this morning watering my garden and let me tell you what, I have a constant abundance of cucumbers. I mean, those things have, I've only planted two seeds, so I only have two plants or vines and they have been so successful that I am just constantly, you know, uh, making my husband pickled cucumbers. We're using them in our salad because I have salad makings in my garden also and giving them away to family members. So um, really successful off those two plants. And uh, my squash is looking fabulous also. So anyways, um, that is good news on my front. I wanted to read a selection out of Isaiah 53 about Jesus being our burden bearer and understanding the burdens that we go through. Often we think about God, sometimes we have this thought like he's far removed and he can't understand what we're dealing with and that is so untrue he really understands what we're going through and so i wanted to read that selection today so i will get right into it so isaiah 53 who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. So stopping right there. First of all, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. And so that's saying that Jesus Christ was a normal man. He wasn't born majestically to be drawn to him as a majestic king, even though he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. I think this is really telling us that he is just was common folk like us. And that um, he wasn't some, you know, stunning movie star, you know, lookalike um, person. Because I don't think the Bible would have included this. He's saying that he, uh, you know, was right along with regular folk, all of us regular folk. And there was nothing to, you know, in his appearance to draw us specifically to him, that we were just, you know, drawn to him by his appearance, okay? Also, he was despised and rejected by men or people, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. And so, to me, that's a very comforting thing because Jesus Christ has always been. He is, I am the great I am. So he was always been, you know, in heaven. But when he took on the form of human and became fully human and fully God, he became acquainted with the sorrows and the grief and the lives that we have here as humans so that he could be our perfect priest and know what we face. So he's very, was a very acquainted um, you know, with sorrows and rejection and despised by people. And so we can be despised by people. We can be rejected. We may have no, uh, nothing that people are drawn to. And Jesus intimately knew that personally for himself. And then it says, like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. So he was carrying our stuff, 
our burdens. He is our burden carrier, our sin carrier, our sorrow carrier. And so people look down on him and considered him stricken by God because of the crucifixion and what he endured. But it was for us. It wasn't for anything that he did or caused because he was sinless. So he is well acquainted with our sorrows because he took them on for us. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities or sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. He took it all. And by his wounds, we are healed. And they beat him. They mocked him. They uh, struck him. They stripped him. They, you know, took dice and rolled for his garments. They slammed that um, crown of thorns upon him. They did terrible things to the king of kings, and he took it all for us to be our burden bearer. We all, all of us, there is not one that this would not include, like sheep have gone astray, and each of us has turned to his own way. And we all should be able to say that and say, yes, I have turned and gone according to my own way. We are rebels. We are troublemakers. We are, you know, sinful people that have gone our own way. This is an absolutely true statement about everyone in the world. And then it says, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. He took it freely for us. He took those sins freely. In defense of himself, he would have had a defense because he was sinless. But he didn't open his mouth or argue about it because he knew he was coming for us, for our sins. He knew that is exactly what he was coming for and he freely did it for us. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. So he was assigned the grave of dying on a cross with the wicked, the criminals, the murderers, the thieves, those who they deemed uh, to put on a cross were the wicked. So he died there. And then the rich in his death. And remember this, Isaiah was written before any of this occurred. This is all prophetical. So he was put in the rich man's grave, okay? Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Never lied, no violence, okay? Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And so it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer for our sins, not for anything that he did, but for our sins. He had to take upon the wrath of God upon himself and be separated from the Father for the first time ever because of us. He is our burden and sin bearer. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquity. So notice it didn't say all, uh, because not everyone will accept the Lord Jesus Christ's gracious offer of salvation, okay? It's there, but not everyone will accept it. 
Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, with the, you know, with the sinners. Okay, he was numbered with the sinners. For he bore the sin of many and made the transgression uh, and made the intercession for the transgressors. So we are the transgressors. He died a brutal death for us. He took all the mocking for us. He took the you know, pain and the suffering and the wrath of God and the separation from God for us. So he is intimately um, acquainted with us and with what we're going through in our lives. So don't ever think that Jesus Christ is far removed and cannot understand what we are going for, going through. He is our high priest at the right hand of God, sitting down. It is finished. That's why he's sitting down. It is finished and he is interceding for us forever for what we're going through for the sins that we commit he is a gracious god and our burden bearer and i hope this has been an encouragement to you that you can always come to him trusting in him with whatever you're going through and laying it at his feet and knowing that he will understand he will intercede for you i hope that you have a wonderful day